All right, T. Welcome back to another episode of Open Topics. This is episode number 23. And last episode, I talked about some of the bad things DC did over the past year and a half-ish. So, let's do something positive, okay? Because, basically, I can be very positive in these series. Okay, we're talking about some of the good things that Marvel is... That was the good things that... Well, let's, let's start with DC. Uh, good thing with Marvel. I'm going to tell you that one. Uh, number one, several series basically would have lasted a long period of time before hit the before they ended, whatever. And some are still continuing. Uh, if you think about it, uh, fun fact, uh, guess how many series published by Marvel have not hit the restart button in the past four years? The answer is currently... To my knowledge, about two titles have not hit the restart button in the last four years. Avengers, which is not surprising given how long the title is. And here's another one that surprises even, even me. New Mutants. Yes, because they recently released issue 30. Another title that's not hit the restart button in the last few years has been X-Force. That's another series basically like that. Now you might think, is there any, any solo titles that hit the restart button the last four years? Well, I would say Amazing Spider-Man, but I did that this year. Or Venom's... And currently, no solo title published by Marvel Comics. Actually, there is one. One solo title that has not hit the restart button or ended for any reason. That's Captain Marvel. Lasting for four years publication. So basically, Marvel finally has something like that finally publishing. Some long-running series. What a hit in the restart but a freaking year. Uh, number two. And this is my opinion anyways. A lot of the events they put out in the last few years have been really good. Like, in 2018, we had Infinity War. A crossover I really enjoyed. You want another, want another good release of crossovers? Well, how about War of the Realms? Awesome. Absolute Carnage. Amazing. I actually kind of liked Empire. X of Swords, I, I do like the cross. I get the criticism for it just too long. Good story, just too long. That's probably the story. Excuse me. And that was in 2020. In 2021, we had the first half of the year taken up by King in Black. We also had the return of the Star Wars crossovers. First time in uh, a few years. Last one they had was Screaming Citadel. I think that was back in 2017, I think it was. Yeah, they didn't have one for a few years because I think Screaming Citadel didn't do too well financially for them, so... I guess they figured out why to do War of Bouncers and doing apparently another cross, Cook Up Crosses right now. Big major stories like Crimson mm -hmm. Rain and of course the Hidden Empire, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let's see what else. Mm, let's see. Aside from King of Black and War of Bouncers, wasn't a really big major crossovers for Marvel last year. This year so far, we've had technically one crossover. And that's A X E Judgment Day. And that's currently the only crossover happening right now. Because you probably think, oh, you probably think, okay, what, what about. There's also a. That, but uh, th th those are big crossovers. There was one small crossover happened this year, and that was Banner War. That was a crossover between two titles by Donny Cotis, Hulk and Thor. Yep. But. Any of our small scale ones? Well, they all did have the Hellfire Gala last year, which was a crossover that really did not. It did lead to some interesting ideas afterwards, like it did lead into stuff like the trial of Magneto, which basically one of the things it did lead to. Also, the miniseries Inferno, yes. And my guess is, is that Marb must have realized though doing that again a year later because they really want to do another one of these things. That that was not too. They're not. I guess some of them are like, okay, that was good. It probably could be okay for us financial, but let's not do that again. Let's do just do it in one one shot. We don't need to have all the X tiles do it. Yeah, my guess they must have basically mm. chowed on that. The only case of Hellfire Gilla that did in the way end John Vickman's time in the X Men books, because there was one miniseries published after that, and that was it. Yeah, he didn't do a lot for the X books, per se. Now, in the case of one book, I gotta give I, two books I gotta get high praise for Amazing Spider Man Nick Spencer and 
actually three books. Uh, Venom by Donnie Coas and Hulk by Al Yumi. These three are amazing titles. Nick Spencer, in my opinion, saved Spider-Man. He saved the Amazing Spider-Man book. Because, you know what he did? Have Spider-Man fight his own villains, have a supporting cast actually appear in the damn book, and of bring other books because the writers want to use them, or create their own supporting cast. Do interesting ideas, create like a couple of new groups, have occasionally Spider-Man fight other villains that are not technically his. Let's see. Oh, he also did something that apparently Dan Slott didn't want to do during his whole entire run. Actually have good build-up for storylines. Yes, that is one thing I give high praise for Marvel for a couple of its writers, where they built up storylines really well, and they pay off, and like, in the case, now, when you we think about the Nick Spencer run from his experiment, you had two storylines at the very start. That was there for... For the basically the book. Now, one storyline did pretty much take up the entire row run, and that was the Kendra stuff. That one did have a disappointing ending to it. But hey, at least he built up to it. Also, another thing was the Cravens. Uh, what was was the what was the storyline? The the Hunt was a storyline that built up since you won. It had a return of Craven the Hunt returning to Amazing Spider-Man, first time since 2010. First time in eight years since he returned to the title. Because he appeared in like all of the Marvel Universe. And finally, I think this was like similar to Craven's last hunt per se. Where basically this was one last time he would do it. And Nick Spencer would also bring back the Planetary Shield. Which was last season in Empire. A storyline everybody hated. Which of course, the, the my only guess is the reason why he brought it back in the story. Uh, number one, he's the one who created the damn thing. And two, at least they have a whole freaking planet this time. It's only one area of New York. Though it did have, oh, it did actually have pretty good conclusion to it. I like the fact that Craven the Hunter got, got a very good send off. He, he basically died again. This was the second time he died. At least they did alive longer than he, the other he he characters that brought back. Like, some characters brought back, they're back for, like, a year or two before they die again. He was alive for eight years before he killed, before, actually, it was, like, nine years before he killed himself. Again, nine years. Good job for that one. The Kendra stuff, I thought was really good in terms of Amazing Experiment. Like, also, during the time of this one, we had the return of Ravencroft becoming a prominent fiction of the universe. First time in years, thanks to events of Absolute Carnage. Which, that of course was built up a little bit in Venom, but it did lead into the awesomeness that was King in Black. A very good crossover. I personally think it's, and this is my opinion, one of the best crossovers in the last decade. It's good. It's heroes fight off an alien invasion. This is the first thing they've done since 2008. Uh, eight. Though it's done a lot more better than that one. War of the Realms was definitely a crossover that Jay Snare built up over the course of seven years in the pages of Thor. Good build up and great payoff. It was a cross it's a crossover I do recommend for people to try out because even though it's here's the thing, it's only around like here's the you look at publication wise, it's only around for just for a few months. And that's it, just like three I think it's around about three months because they put it usually every couple weeks. But it's not run very long. It's quick. Done over with. Excuse me. Absolute Carnage. Which was an excellent story. Where if you had Spider-Man there. You also focus on Venom. Though the biggest thing about this crossover was that basically we had Death of Cletus Cassidy. And to my knowledge he's still dead. He's still in the hive mind of Carnage per se. But the actual person himself, he's been dead since this crossover wrapped up. Though, this crossover did lead to the death of Shriek. And from what I've read, apparently that Don Nicole was not allowed to kill off any big name characters in the story. Well, he did kill off Carnage, but I think that was fine. King in Black, which was a story that he built up for some time Pages of Phantom, which did a really good job with it. You would think, okay, like... Is there any good thoughts when it comes to the the Thor by Donnie Curtis? It's a good run. I do thoroughly enjoy it. Yes, basically anything that Jason Aaron did to Thor at during his run was completely done for his physical body, but it's still a really good run. Avengers, 
is really good. I've never thought this book is, uh, took a dip at any point in time. Not even when Mark Wade wrote the book. Yes, uh, this is just my opinion anyways. That this book has never had a bad run as long as I'm reading this book. And I'm reading Avengers now for basically, as of this year, for set for for 17 years, I have been reading this book. And I've never thought at any point in time we had a bad run for the book. I mean, look, look I mean, people will tend to point, okay, Bendis. I love the Bendis stuff. And I've heard some people who were not fans of John Hickman. I love Hickman stuff. I love some of Mark Wade. Heck, I love Spider Jason Aaron. The only thing I don't like about the Jason Aaron run, and I do kind of agree with the sentiment. The only thing I don't like about it is how they treat She Hulk, like putting her in a relationship with Thor, and having her basically drawn like she's basically Hulk with a wig. Even further as simply the Hulk, which is not her name. I mean, aside from that, the storytelling has been really good this whole book. Though we sadly got a chance at the end of the orb. A character Jason Aaron first created pages of Ghost Rider of all things. Yeah, when he first did his Ghost Rider, he created this new orb. He's not the original orb per se. The original orb, basically, his eye was a helmet. It wasn't an actual head like it was with this guy. Let's see. Let's see what else. Well, we did have basically Mark Wade on the... We did have a couple writers on the Doctor Strange book. For about a couple of years, you have people like Donnie Codis and Mark Wade, and that was it. That's all we had, and it wasn't until late last year we finally got a chance to see another Doctor Strange book published in the form of the Death of Doctor Strange, which later led to the current Strange book by Jed McKay. Now, was I a fan of killing off Doctor Strange? No, I was not. Did I think the series was terrible? No, I thought the series was really good, and. If you check out my review for it, basically you'll understand. I loved the series. Jen McKay did not disrespect the character. Basically, it was a well-told story. Though I have heard the reason for it is utter bullcrap. Yeah, the reason why Marvel did this. Because Steve Dinko's family is suing Marvel over the rights to this character and Spider-Man. I'm like, seriously? Like, didn't we all go through this with the creators of Superman? So apparently Steve Dinko's family... By the way, Steve Dinko at this point has been dead for... Uh, this year, he's been dead for four years now. And just last year... Oh, let's just sue Marvel to the rights to first parents of Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. Yeah, that was stupid. I'm not blaming Marvel for, for basically that. I blame the, the, the creator's family. Look... Give them, give them some money. Don't give them the damn character. It's their character. And the only reason why they do this is for money. They want freaking money. If they want money, just give it to them. Otherwise, though, families of Steve Dicko, if you uh, watch my video, drop your freaking lawsuit. Because, basically, you are trying to ruin two of my favorite characters at Marvel. I love, I love Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. I own trades of their series. You are trying to basically take that away from me. Two popular characters, favorites of mine, all for your own personal greed. Moving on from that. Uh... Guardians of the Galaxy a pretty decent run the last few years. Though I do disagree with ending the series last year. I thought that was a stupid idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. What else? Um, somebody asked basically, is there any good things about the Xbox? Uh, Wolverine is still a really good book. Like if you read the Wolverine book by Van Percy, that's publishing now for three years. I think about two years now publishing. Where I think it was just last year they celebrated, I think it was issue 8 of the current volume as the 350 issue of the series. Excuse me. I like well, I like the other X Men books. If you're, in my opinion, of all the X books, I think Wolverine is. Wolverine and Marauders are two really good books. So is X Force. I think this is pretty decent, what it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do I think is the worst book? Do I think it's X-Men? Um, 
Um, I think it's the weakest book of the X Men books right now. Is the X Men by Gary Duggan? I think Hickman's run. I actually love Hickman's run. It's just that the run by Gary Duggan has just been okay at best. That's basically what it's been the whole time. The Eternals came back just last year. Really good series. I personally love it. Mm, let's see. What else? Well, the Marvel did have a string of female solo titles, but as of currently, all of them are gone except for Captain Marvel and the Return She Hulk series. Yeah. I'm glad She Hulk is on our book yet. And, and, and here's the thing another book that's really good by Marvel is Fantastic Four by Dan Slott. Yeah, you may not like his Spider Man very much, but you would love his Fantastic Four. And it is amazing. Not a bad issue in 46 issues now they're planning to restart a numbering for this book but here's the weird thing they had the book last for two more issues before it hit the restart button and yeah at least this year basically they're not doing as much as now i now here's the thing one thing i don't like about 2018 is the massive company-wide relaunch of pretty much all the books that was something, and a lot of people have agreed, that was a terrible idea. But we get good stories. Yes. If you ask me personally, what is the weakest current Marvel book for us right now? The answer is, I would probably point to X-Men as one of the weaker books published by Marvel. I don't want to paint about Knights of X. <coughs> Plus, that was how the camp just recently. Um, I don't much opinion about more X Men because it's only publishing for a few issues. But so far, the only books I kind of personally feel this though, a Marvel's weakest book published right now, is just X Men by Gary Duggan. You probably think, okay, what about the current Black Panther book? I actually like the current Black Panther book. Yes, I do. I think John Riley does an excellent job with the book. May not be like as as epically awesome as the previous run, but still a good book. Um, I have a little, I have very little opinion about the current Captain America books right now, because they're not publishing very long. And I've not got a chance to handle the trade yet, so I have much to out. The Iron Book is amazing, really good, and this actually, in my opinion, and my my friend Edgar me. This run saved this character because this character has some weak and has some not very good runs per se. If you want to ask me personally what could be the worst run for Iron Man is the Ansonic one. No, I think it's a bit disappointing of a run, especially at the conclusion with the Iron Man 2020 miniseries. If you want to say what's the best run, it probably the most disappointing run is probably and this is and this is just an opinion that my friend Edgar might agree with me on this is the Bendis run. It is by far the weakest run of the whole series, especially since the bullcrap they with Ironheart dur during her time in the book. Though her, her current solo, her, her her brief solo book did basically help save the character. Yep. Uh, the Hulk run by Donny Cotus, it's weird. It's not terrible, just weird. But as of currently, just X Men. That's the only book I kind of feel as though is the weakest book of all Marvel right now. I mean, could it be X Force? No, X Force is still really good. But aside from X Men itself, that's the only book I. Oh, there is one other book I can't agree on that is one of Marvel's weakest books, and that's the current Amazing Experiment. I met the writer of the book. Now. I do disagree with the uh, the now a lot of people agree on this. I think bringing back Jeremy Jr. on Amazing Experiment was absolutely terrible of that idea. I personally have not been the biggest fan of his artwork. The only book that I kind of felt as though his artwork fit on was Batman or Kick Ass. But Amazing Spider-Man, when I read the JMS run, I felt his artwork was the worst thing, was probably the weakest thing about the whole run. Along with No Time to Die. That was probably his last time he did the book with No Time to Die. I loved the story. Didn't like the artwork. 
And I never, like I said, not the biggest fan of John Ray Jr.'s run. I'm not really sure why Marvel put back in this book for. Like, you could have put any around the book, any artist. Like, you could have kept Mark back in the book. Heck, you could have kept Ed McGinnis in the book. And he's a really good artist. Heck, issue 900 was fantastic. I love that book. Because it's a book, it's by far the only issue this whole run not done by John Romita Jr. Because Ed McGinnis has the artwork. That's what Zeb Wells told me. And, yeah, if you read this whole book, it's only Ed McGinnis doing issue 900. Because if, if you want to keep an artist book, like, take away, um, take away John Romita Jr. And I'll put on there Ed McGinnis. Because... This guy, Clue, can draw really good artwork. And after all, he's done this Spider-Man book before, Side Man's Next Spider-Man. He was the, I believe he was the artist for Spider-Man Deadpool. Yes, he did the arc for that series. So he has some, he has some expertise when it comes to drawing Spider-Man. But doing that her issue was fine. I had no problem with it. I thought the artwork was probably the best thing about the book. So it's pretty interesting what it is. But it is a pretty weak book. And I have heard... That there have been some complaints about the book. Uh, this is according to Zeb Wills, what he told me. Where it's pretty much a very disappointing... Like, uh, there was a couple of minor death threats he got over the book. I was worried because of the first issue that he might get a lot of death threats for it. What he told me, no. A couple minor ones at best, but nothing too serious per se. Yeah, nothing too serious when it comes to his run for Amazing Spider-Man. And some people said, uh, one person told me that he needs to get off the book. And do I think he's in the book? No. Because this is by far a biggest book he's done in his whole career. Not the first time he's done the book, per se, but this is his biggest book he's done in his whole career. And he's only book just, he only, he's only started just this year. Do I think he should get off it? No, because I love the guy's art. I go, I'm a big fan of the guy's writing. He, I pointed this out to him. Him along with Jim Zeb were two Marvel's most underrated writers. And I'm not going to blame him for what's going on with this run. If you want to blame somebody for the run itself, you can probably blame, I don't know, maybe his editor. But I'm not going to point the blame as Zeb Wills while the current Mint and Him book is. Let's see. And here goes so with, with uh, Marvel. Well, they've um, stopped doing the whole thing of basically for certain books charging $5 for them. Like in the past year, but except maybe a number one, I've never seen a book basically charge like a lot of money for it. It's usually been normal price for nine for them. Excuse me. But at least a lot of the books have had good storytelling with them. Something Marvel basically has been lacking for some books for several years now. But things improving. Yes. Now, do I agree with some of the stuff that Marvel's doing right now? No. Um, if you want to think of a book... Now, one thing that Marvel basically has been accused of being woke... Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I think in some of the more smaller tier books is like that. But the big name books like I mean, it's Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Th uh, Thor, Hulk. If a big name book, you probably won't see it there. Do I think it's happened to me as an experiment? Uh, I don't have I'm under much opinion on that part. But if you want to think a book basically has it, well, I think uh, I think that um, Ironheart did have a little bit of it, and uh, probably think some maybe the X books probably do, but but it's a very small scale from what I've seen. But a lot of big name books, like Fantastic Four, no woke stuff in that one, just good storytelling. If I stick to good storytelling and not do any woke in the book, we're perfectly fine. But yeah, that's pretty much it. all I gotta say about it. So yeah, next video is gonna be One Piece. I know you probably think, wait, why, why isn't this One Piece? Because I want to get this out of my system, basically, because I want to talk about good stuff. Okay, all right. So see you next video. Bye.